Welcome to a Delco Nerd Network podcast. I am your host, Anthony Rigucci, and here with a few friends from the Delaware County area. We get in a basement and we talk about a certain topic. Today's topic is going to be the Game Awards 2020. Here to discuss, as always, the triple threat, Christopher Trio. Good, how are you? I'm good. That's good. Hanging in there. Cyberpunk, yeah. like uh, maybe, actually, Demon Souls will be out after this, so... Be sure to check that. Review we're out there. we're way in depth with cyberpunk. We you know we we were pissed that we had to take the time out of our day to do this and yeah. whip ourselves out of Night City. It's been really tough. Yeah, I needed my cyberpunk Punky fix. Punks. I was playing earlier. Uh, you are a little bit further than me. Obviously, it is very buggy. We've been having our issues, but I think overall it's been. I've still been having an, an immensely good. time. It's gonna be an interesting review for sure. Uh-huh. Thanks, Gino. Gino, Appreciate love it. it. Appreciate it. You're the best. But. I don't, I'm, not that it's going to be a long show, but we got a lot to talk about. So let's get into it. Yeah. Game Awards 2020, the f- the show in pandemic. Let me tell you, boy, it was a it was a, it was a good show. Um, How long? I know, I know you didn't watch it. Yeah. It was about three hours, so uh-huh. seven to ten. They 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 listened to your advice. They started earlier. That's what I'm saying. At least do that. Like I'm fine with three hours. Just don't start I, it at fucking just, nine. Just to critique the show uh, quickly, kind of before we start, I think Jeff did a really good job, and I think this was definitely a, a tough one. I feel yeah. like, you know, he got a lot of cool guests to come on and present awards, but it does feel like, you know, Brie Larson guess- presenting the B- Games for Impact Award, or no, uh, Voice Performance Award from her house was like kind of like, eh. seemed very phoned in, yeah. right? Because everything Because is- it literally is phoned in. <laughs> right, like, yeah. right. Yeah, and I, you know, that's not that's not Jeff's fault, but the, the awards are still good. There were some times where it's like... <laughs> it's stinted. Probably, One thing really bugged me. I forget who was accepting the award, but like somebody was like sitting inside on their computer, and then like the, uh, their developer who was also getting the re- award um, was like outside on the other side of like a wall and a window, and like, like I'm like, what the fuck? COVID. Like, <laughs> like, but like, why? Why do you have somebody standing outside? Why not just get on another call? Like, why isn't both or, of them on the or, call? Like, I, most people was like one person ex- accepting the reward, and sure. like there were occasionally some devs in the same room together. Um, like among us, they were all together, all wearing masks. And I think other than that, everyone was kind of just like normal, yeah. which was what I was looking for. Like, I like. I'm kind of surprised they uh, haven't been together. Like I don't, I don't know where these devs are from or, yeah, or whatever. Sure. But I'm just like, yeah, like, like I would have liked to keep the masks out of the award show. Like I don't need to be reminded of the situation. That was my critique. That's nothing, Jeff. You know, sure. And unfortunately, it's about. the time right now. Just devs doing like, like don't do something weird. Like why, why is she standing outside? Like just fucking come in, man. Like well, you're like already there. Well, like, Gooch, she can't have them within six feet. God damn it. Ugh. Don't get Fuck us started it. on I Rona. can't wait until the award shows in person because next year is going to be probably like a big deal. Jeff's going to go all out. If we're back to normal. No. <laughs> this year was a, a weird year for gaming. For we had some yeah. good games, but. Um, really overall. It yeah. was going to be a hype year and then it, <laughs> and it just went right down the tubes. Right. So let's get into it. Um, I omitted some awards. We're not going to be talking about all the awards, just kind of like the bigger ones. If we don't have anything to say in general, we'll just I kind of move on by them. Some of them I left on here just for the sake of like, I think we can talk to it, but like some of the esports awards, I'm not including them because in years past, we've kind of, we just kind of go like, yeah. And it's just like, I don't need it. I yeah. Don't need I don't need it. All right. So let's start it off. Multiplayer game. Um, the winner was Among Us and then. Not oh, surprised. Right. That's a totally good one, not yeah. surprised. But. Up, up against it was Animal Crossing, New Horizons, Call of Duty Warzone, Fall Guys, Ultimate Knockout, or Valorant. I think it would definitely be between Among Us and Fall Guys. Because those, sure. those were kind of those, the, like... The big kind of, like, zeitgeist games this that year. Everyone was, that everyone and your mother was playing. Right. But, um, what we got next? Um, sports and racing game. Winner, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. Up against Dirt 5, F1 2020, FIFA 21, and NBA 2K 21. I feel like don't people have really, like really big beefs with FIFA now? Doesn't it, like suck. Like I, I don't know. I, I I'm very call, much out I of the loop. I could probably call Pens up right now and, and he'd, have him and he'd talk for months. Do a podcast. Yeah, on. that's so hey, true. You played Tony Hawk. I did. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. I think I it's, did too as well. It's definitely it, a very arcadey game. Obviously, like it's it's not very technical in the way of like when you played like skate or something. 
which is fine though. I think it's they did an amazing job kind of making me relive that nostalgia, but I think also have a fun game. Uh, I would definitely say pick it up, especially if you like have a little nostalgia wrapped up in it, but also just want a, like a fun, just kind of mess around game. It's only like 40 bucks too. It's probably cheaper now, but it was 40 when it was new. Right. We're all, we're, you know, I'm going to say we're not, we're all, but I would say most of us have probably have some nostalgia for that series. For like sure. I played it. I'm not that good at it, and <laughs> but I was I was Still having a good time. time. Like, yeah. like some of those maps, it's like fuck. I, I remember like, wow, this, this map. is bringing me back. Yeah. yeah. Um, next up, we have Family Game. Winner was Animal Crossing: New Horizons, going up against Crash Bandicoot Four. It's about time. Fall wow. Guys Ultimate Knockout, Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, which are the those. Do you see those remote control yeah, cars? Yeah. Okay, that's what that is. Cool. Uh, Minecraft Dungeons and Paper Mar- Mario: The Origami King. Mario? What Mario. about Mario? No. Sorry. No, I no Mario. I feel like I hear a lot too. Animal Crossing winning, no surprise. Another game with like a zeitgeist this year. For sure. I mean, my girlfriend's been playing it since it came out, and she she loves it. But she does say that there are some like, there's not a lot of incentives to keep doing things for certain things. Like like, like when it, I know it's been. It's, she said it's being like kind of built as they're going along, right or something like. Right. I mean, they're yet. they're adding like holiday stuff, and mm-hmm. I, I assume they're doing some improvements. Interesting. But yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all. Next up, we have RPG. Uh, winner, obviously. Final Fantasy VII Remake going up against Genshin Impact, Persona 5 Royal, Wasteland 3, and Yakuza Like a Dragon. Literally the only one on there that I would have even sort of guessed was Final Fantasy. I will talk about Final Fantasy VII as we get to Game of the Year because that was one of the contenders. So I won't I won't divulge about it now. Next <laughs> up, action adventure game. Winner, Last of Us Part Two going up against Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Ghost of Tsushima, Marvel Spider Man, Miles Morales, Ori, Will the Wisp, and Jedi Fallen Order. I don't care what any- Here's my thing. I wouldn't categorize Last of Us as an action adventure game. I mean, like I guess base I get why they did. I, but I would agree with you I, to a degree. I really think that Spider Miles Morales or Shishima probably deserve this, and maybe Valhalla. I think, but so like, th- Last of Us is like it's not an it's not an adventure game. It's not an. Adventure I think game. by technicality it is. Yeah, but I agree with you. Whereas like it doesn't feel like that's like, and I don't care what <laughs> it definitely doesn't feel like I don't like care that. what you say. I still think Tsushima, out of all those, at least for me, and I, I haven't played Final Fantasy. But like, the five know, even on there. and what about what about Fallen Order though? Fallen Order, also that's so true. Fallen Order, but I think Sush- like the thing about Ghost of Tsushima, that game just hit it on every single level for me. Truly, like when it came to story, and I can, we'll get more into this when it comes to game of the year. But like, yeah, I would agree with you. I don't feel like it's very. I know technically that's true, and that is the, and it kind of would be weird if it didn't win, and then it won game of the year or whatever. It it's, uh, it sucks that Jedi Fallen Order is such a. Not no one's talking about that anymore. Well, but it's also so I, I, like Cyberpunk this year. Is no, gonna it's be so true. It it's gonna be that, year. yeah. And it's like, is it really gonna be up for Game of the Year? Are we gonna be over Cyberpunk by then? Or like, you know, well, and it pro- but be? again, it'll turn into like I feel like, yeah, that does suck because that came out what De- December la- or like November last Just, year. I think it was. November. I want to say it was like December eleventh. I want to say that too. I don't know why that dates in my head. It was after the date. So that's right. That's yeah, why yeah. it wasn't called because it was after that like date that Jeff sets. Yeah, and I don't. I actually I would put ghosts above that for me for sure. Actually, like just overall really? experience. Okay. Well, yeah, I know yeah. you were you were high on falling. And I and stuff. I still really enjoyed it, but I just like <sighs> Ghost of Tsushima, just being a new IP, like them hitting it out of the park the way they did. Yeah, we'll we'll get into more of that though when it comes to gaming. Next up, best action game. Hades being the winner, uh, going up against Doom Eternal, Half Life Alex, Neo Two, and Streets of what Rage. What is Hades? 4. Hades is by the Supergiant. Uh, they made Transistor, Bastion, Pyre. This is their oh, most so it's game. like kind of like okay. I've heard a lot of good things. I haven't played it because I want to replay Bastion and Transistor and then play Pyre. They're kind of like indie developers. I like to play all of their games before I jump in their most recent yeah. thing. I feel like like. Playing their games kind of like gives a vibe, kind of the same thing I did with um, Night Studios and After Party. Like I played um, uh, Oxenfree first because I'm like I just want to like understand the developer and their past, you know. Sure, no, that makes and honestly, I'm kind of surprised Doom Eternal didn't win that one. I, again, I don't know much about Doom, Doom Eternal was a game that came out and nobody seemed to talk about. Well, it got good. Yeah, it, it's, I agree with that, and I think it's kind of a shame because I think that game is very good and a lot of fun. I actually was replaying it recently, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah. Go ahead. What we got next, next up, we have Innovation and Accessibility. This is a new award. Um, the Last of Us Part Two won this. Um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla was also up. Grounded, Hyperdot, and Watch Dogs Legion. Hmm. I think it's pretty obvious that 
Last of Us won. Uh, you know, the, uh, there was a big like kind of conversation on Twitter. I feel that like Last of Us had a shit ton of accessibility features that like most games don't have. Were insane, and yeah. it's a AAA studio, so I yeah. feel like they're kind of setting an example. So it, it makes sense that they won. That's cool. Next up, we have best VR and AR game. Half Life I mean, Alex was yeah, the winner there. That's zero. Dr- going up against Dreams. Marvel's Iron Man VR, Star Wars Squadrons, and The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. Half Life Alex, I heard, was almost game of the year worthy. Oh, so I heard that. Too. Like, surprised. I heard that is truly like the first full fledged, like, game VR made game. in VR. But that... it feels like a AAA game, like in right. fully. Yeah, that's that's cool. I wonder if Super will probably get that on his. I need to. I need to go over and use him for his Oculus Rift soon. <laughs> I think it's only on the. The is it only the, on the, the Valve's the, index? Oh, really? It's only on Valve's? I think so. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty that's sure that's it. If it because yeah. like it is kind of like locked behind that having yeah. the Valve index, hmm. which you know I don't know how many people have. Again, yeah. I don't know a ton about VR, but like is 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 it like the same? Except it's Valve put out exclusive games for it, like the Oculus yeah. and, and the Vive. Like I don't, I don't know. know the difference. Hmm. I'd be curious. Next up, we got community support. Uh, winner being Fall Guys, Ultimate Knockout, Apex Legends, uh, Destiny 2, Fortnite, No Man's Sky, Valorant. I don't really have too much to say. Fall Guys, I know, is like a game that probably wouldn't have done well in general, but it seems like you know they're they're implementing passes and they and really doing kind of doing it. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, Mobile game, Among Us won that. I'm not going to list out the rest. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, debut indie game, uh, winner was Phasmophobia. The only other I game heard about on, that one. The only other game on this list that I know about is Mortal Shell, which is a Souls-like game hmm. that apparently is pretty cool. Um, next up, we have Best Indie Game. Uh, the winner was Hades, going up against Carrion, Fall Guys, Splunky 2, and Spirit Fair. Um, you know, Hades is pretty good, sure. as, as, yeah, <laughs> as yeah. I've been saying. Best Ongoing Game, No Man's Sky was the winner for that. Going up against Apex Legends, Destiny 2, Call of Duty Warzone, and Fortnite Trio. You do play No Man's Sky. I do. And so what was... I'm sorry. I blanked there for a second. What was the, what was the game? What was the <laughs> Ongoing game. Ongoing game. And a No Man's Sky did win. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No. Truth, truthfully, like, it's amazing how much of a difference that game is from when it launched. It's it's a lot of fun just to, just to kill some time and to really just be like, I'm just going to go explore some worlds. And there really is a lot of variety and depth now to these different worlds that you go to and it kind of seems a lot more like i didn't really follow that release from the beginning and i know there was all these over all these over promised things that never really were that never came to fruition and they from by all accounts it seems like they kind of have i so think far. the main dev's name is steve murray i'm yeah. pretty sure his name is and um he was very surprised and he won their award was he yeah well that's cool hey <laughs> and i gotta say because he, <laughs> he apparently was lying he did and he was apparently lying a lot on like interviews and stuff but I will give it to that guy. They stuck around. They made that game into something that's pretty good, and I think it's worth even the forty or fifty dollars price tag. It's probably still at. Next up, uh, games for impact. Tell me why I won that. That is um, real quick. That's uh, don't nod the developer of license Life is Strange. It's yeah. about like a trans character. I heard nothing about it, and I wish I I kind of got it because I like I'm interested in playing that because I like Life is Strange. Sure, but I I didn't hear much about it. Yeah, but apparently it's pretty good. Okay, we'd have to look into it. Next up, we have performance. Oh, the winner, Laura Bailey as Abby in The Last of Us Two, oh, going up that. against Ashley Johnson as Ellie from The Last of Us Part Two. Um, and Daisuke Zajui? No, is that for that's Jin? For Jin Daisuke is definitely is Daisuke. Yeah. I'm butchering names. It's all right. You're doing what you can. <laughs> it's Jen from Ghost of Tsushima. Logan Cunningham, uh, Logan Cunningham as Hades from Hades. Yeah. Naji uh, Jeterm as Miles Morales from Miles Morales. Um, I'm not surprised Laura Bailey won. I think she deserved that. Award. Really? I like. I, I think Laura Bailey was put in a very weird situation. No, I agree. Character. And I think like and she got really got lit up for no reason and stuff. She like got that. lit and, up like, for him for no reason, but like also like. You were like set up to not like her. Sure, and I you're, you're, and I and I hated her by the end. Right, exactly. <laughs> like, but, but like, I think she did a very good job of like performing Abby, and and like and like Ellie is more like we're rooting for Ellie. We're not rooting for Abby. So yeah. I think it's interesting that the, her character kind of like 
shine just as much as Ellie. Like I guess in, the, I just, in, in yeah, like in I whatever know. emotion you were feeling towards her, there was like emotion. But like, it was just I guess for me like I did not like Last of Us Two. I just realized I haven't thought about it since the game had come out, and I truly don't get the in, infatuation with all the like. I don't know, and I'm not going to begrudge anyone for liking it because obviously there's something to it, and people seem to really like it. So I must be the one missing something here. But no, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, like are like our review. Yeah, it's a lo- it's a love or hate kind of thing. Like and I like, just, and then I was in the middle. Yeah, I mean, and I think people are kind of in these three like degrees of of hate it, or, or hate or love with it. And that's right. like, don't get me wrong, I'm not sitting here like visceral. Like I just guess I was just like it was a very okay like it just felt like there wasn't anything new done in that game at least acting wise that i feel like we haven't seen in other games and i think she did an amazing job and i think she gave a great great performance but Jin in ghost again for me was a i was much more connected to that character and i and, th- and i felt like the performances were incredibly well done even all around in that game mm-hmm. and i don't know like don't get me wrong i feel really bad for Laura Bailey and like the amount of weird insane and like we've seen this before with other characters and medias guys the actor doesn't control what the character does yell at they, Neil Druckmann yell at Neil Druckmann <laughs> just kidding they're getting paid to do a job and honestly good for fucking them they, they, if they can make the money do that and she is a great actress or actor and I don't know definitely not my wouldn't have been my choice but you know it makes sense with all the, with how the other awards have gone or and are gonna go throughout the night Next up, we have audio design again winning The Last of Us Part Two, going up against Doom As Eternal. Charlie Sheen would say winning. <laughs> going up against Doom Eternal. <laughs> That's a dated reference. Half Life, <laughs> Half Life Alex, Ghost of Tsushima, and Resident Evil Three. I don't. Okay. <laughs> Last of Us, as you can tell, is sort of mopping things up. This here. is the Last of Us game show. Score and music winner: Final Fantasy VII Remake going up against Doom Eternal, Hades, Ori, Will of the Wisps, and Last of Us Part Two. Final Fantasy VII wholly deserves this award. They made iconic tracks from the original even more iconic and better. I, I think I think Final Fantasy VII Remake score is like stupendous. I mean, they already had good music to go off of, but like the level in which the quality of like the songs are redone and like modernized is. Is so fucking cool. Hmm. Like I'm sure if you went through that, like you would be talking about the music. The music sure. for any Final Fantasy is a very it's just I- on point. It's iconic. That's cool. Yeah, um, I was really happy that won. If Last of Us fucking won, I, <laughs> I would have been losing it. But I was gonna burp again. I don't want to burp into the mic. No. Sorry. The fucking I'm d- yeah, I know it's it's so good though. The Pepsi. I've never had a cherry Pepsi. Really? I don't like cherry. I've had Coke, a cherry Coke. Like, Coke. See, not what? My- what? Why? <laughs> I don't know. I don't like it as much. As your reaction is really good there. What? They're like the same thing. I find it to be a tad different. And I like Pepsi, Cherry Pepsi better. Anyways, decide Pepsi the Coke. Coke. Okay. But if I have to have a Cherry Pepsi or a Cherry Coke, it's me Cherry Pepsi. Art direction. Um, Ghost of Tsushima won this. Good. It's going up against Final Fantasy VII <laughs> Remake, Hades, Ori, Will the Wisp, and Last of Us Part Two. Ghost of Tsushima has a very identifiable art style, and it's, and it's just direction beautiful. Yeah. goes through that game immensely. I could see Final Fantasy VII winning, but like I, I think Ghost of Tsushima really has this takes identity it to, to its style that yeah. right, it takes mm, it home. Really does. Um, best narrative, again, Last of Us Part Two, uh, okay. going up against Thirteen Sentinels, Aegis Rim, which I've never heard of, Final Fantasy VII Remake, and Ghost of Tsushima and Hades. Um, Interesting choice. Again, we have the AAA game kind of mopping up the floor, yeah. which is kind of what's happening here, which is fine. This usually happens every year, one game, because it kind of does take a lot of awards home. But I don't think Last of Us Part II's narrative is the strongest point about it. It's told in a very janky way. It's not very stereotypical, but I don't and think, I don't think new, the way yeah, exactly. it does it's not it. New. I like, don't think yeah. the way it does it is necessarily new and interesting the greatest yeah. part about it um you know i i can't talk for hades and, and 13 sentinels goes to shima is a pretty it's kind of it's broken down an axe or whatever and then also i just think that's like a very good and i i think they build up the narrative between the, the father or well not the father and the son but the, the uncle, uncle and, yeah. and the and the nephew like pretty well very by the well, end of it yeah final fantasy 7 however does something I don't think a game has ever done, and that's kind of my big thing with it. I think it takes the Final Fantasy narrative, takes what you know about it, spins it on its head, and totally reimagines it. Forget everything you ever knew. 
Sort of, yeah. you know, and you're just saying that to be funny. <laughs> no, <it's>, you know, <laughs> I, I kind of am, but it's also a fact. Yeah, like I think Final Fantasy VII Remake, you know, kind of like, we won't, I won't talk about spoilers, but like what it does, I, I think should be looked at. A what little, it like, does. What they decided to do, and not necessarily retell Final Fantasy VII, or, or like remake Final Fantasy VII, but like tell it in a very different way. Hmm. Um, to which like the narrative is different. Yeah, and I and I think that's why it stood out, and I'm, hmm. I'm and I'm sad to see that Last of Us, a game that like was narratively not bad, but like told in a very janky way, that you know it, it was told out of not out of order. No, but like, well, it was yeah, it was a very and honestly one of those. Th- uh, I think maybe if they did tell that in a less janky way, like you're saying, a less stilted way, maybe some people, even including myself, would have found it more narratively pleasing i don't like maybe there's an order in that game in which everyone likes it like in the, in the way it's broken up you yeah. know what i mean I, or, I would, or, they should release something that you can stitch levels together because um tom defolvia who's been on the podcast before friend of the show said that he's playing the, the game in kind of like his own order like he's like playing around in acts to kind of like make it make sense i think the game could be cool if you played it that's like true that. and i feel like i ex- now i'm thinking back to the review i think tom might have even said that in yes, on the review that's like, what it was he like said. he thinks this is like out of yeah it's very true it's i think it could have made a world of difference for that game for some reception anyways but next up we got most anticipated game and we can we can sit here and, and talk about this yeah, for a actually, little bit. I, before winner. you even give me the oh, here, don't give me the winner first give me options i'm curious i'll mix them up oh mm-hmm. a, oh there's no i'm gonna mix them up just so oh, mix them up so oh, okay so yeah the i first thought you said one, make some up yeah no <laughs> So, Resident Evil Village, Halo Infinite, Elden Ring, Horizon Forbidden West, God of War sequel, and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel. It's either God of War or Zelda. That want it? That want it. Am I wrong? You're wrong. Really? Yeah. What were the other options? Halo Infinite. Okay. Elden Ring. All right. Resident Evil Village. Okay. And Horizon Forbidden West. Not Horizon. Right. Okay. Not Elden Ring? Oh, is it Elden Ring? Elden what is Ring. Elden Ring again? Elden no. Ring is the is the next Souls game uh, that from Software is making right. in collaboration with George R. R. Martin. Oh, that's fuck. I totally. And it's been MIA since it got announced. When did and that get announced? A lot of people, like, through two years ago at E three, not no. this one, but the last the, the one last after that. one. Wow. So I, a lot I of people, that was even a lot of people were hoping that we would get would gameplay here, yeah. um, but we didn't. So we still don't know what's going on with Elden Ring. But for me, it was infinite. Um, I was gonna, I was, I kind of had wanted to have it. Well, it fits into the sh- to the listing of the awards. But I was gonna talk like, what are our most anticipated games for next year? And mine for like 110 percent if i'm picking one is halo infinite now that we know it's coming out in 2021 i'm really excited for what that game's gonna do i know the delay is kind of bumming and it's kind of it's kind of shitty news but i I feel that halo infinite is going to be a fucking halo to write home to i I hope so i know four and five kind of weren't the best multiplayer wise i think halo five is is the best we've ever had but i think we need that story to complement kind of give it back yeah God damn it. I'm sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> Stop drinking. I'm done. Yeah, Stop I'm done. with your cherry Pepsi. <laughs> it's so good, though. Anyway, um, I think out of those options, for me, it would definitely be Elden Ring or God of War. I mean, it can be whatever you want. No, I know. No, I know. I'm just I'm, I'm thinking out loud. But I guess God of choose- War is not it. Is Here's the thing. I'm thinking, well... This necessarily doesn't mean 2021, but when I when I wanted to when I told you like think of a most anticipated game, I think I hope I said 2021 because that's what I'm thinking of like what coming sure, out what's, next year. And then, and the, and God the, of War ain't coming out next yeah, year. Yeah, 2022 at the earliest, I'd say. Furman West could come out next year. Resident Evil Village is Breath of the Wild sequel could Village, be. Village, I actually really can't. Wait Elden Ring it. might. Yeah. God um, of War, no. No, you're definitely right. That's that's definitely so. Do, true. It, what do you have one for that? For what? Like, what's your most anticipated game for next year? It would probably be... Of what we know is next year. I mean, or you can just pick whatever. No, 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 no. Well, I guess Elden Ring, since it's possibly next year. Really? I would say, like, I mean, I guess, like... What, you uh, like oh, the no, George I'm R. sorry, R. I, guess, I guess Village would be. Now, okay. if that's coming out next... Yeah, Elden Ring, I'm definitely very peaked into. Like, I like that concept just literally off the bat of... And if they do it in a way that's kind of like, I think Sekiro really draws draws me in because of how, I guess, one, the story is a lot more comprehensive, like we said. 
two, I th- I find that the fighting mechanic in that, but like we did very say on the Demon Souls review, even yeah. though it was before this. <laughs> Just give us some yeah. context that I got. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting <laughs> switched between po- podcasts. We're in yeah. a different podcast. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think yeah, Resident Evil Village because that one looks like it's starting. It's keeping with the horror, very kind of first person horror aspect, but like bringing in more uh, more monsters and things like that, and it looks like a very interesting setting. So yeah, Resident Evil Village. I would definitely say. Does that leave us with our last big, big one? One more. Uh, one more. Game direction before uh, game of the year. Fucking, I know. Can I Can I guess? Last of Us Part 2. Wow, Trio. What makes <laughs> you think <laughs> that? <laughs> Final Fantasy Seven going up against it, as well as Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, and Half-Life Alex. Okay. See, that would have been cool. Though, See, like, like, I don't know. I don't know if Last of Us 2 has a very, like, standout-ish game direction. I don't think it does. I think it's Last of Us Part 2 is, like, you know. Did, it's, a good, it's a good like, game, but, like, it's not, it's not, not home different. About. Yeah, like, I it's don't It's not find... different. We've seen this before. I agree. Where I think, like, It doesn't narratively or even every other game on, wise uh, Every other game on this list is very different. I agree, and it and a loss. So it's kind of like that thing where, like you know, the AAA, the AAA game that was the most and talked about is kind of just wrapping them up. And it's and funny because there's almost layers of like because I guess Ghost of Tsushima would technically be AAA, right? Yeah, yeah. So Sucker Punch, yeah. I feel like, and I and this might just me be blabbing mouth. I do feel like the fact that this is a mainstay series that we already are familiar with too, kind of. There's a lot uh, helping. Fa- yeah, I think it really. It's not that it's a bad game. It's I just, not, yeah, I just, I just a lot for a lot of these. I just think personally, like I just don't agree with them because I don't. It's, it's I, I a guess good, it's, it's, the one it's, where it's a it's good like, game. It's just not my favorite, and like a lot of like a, a lot of people would probably disagree with that. A lot yeah. of people are probably like, yeah, Last of Us Part Two deserves all those awards. It's more I, like I the just, one where I see people going like, this is game changing for video games or something. Like, I mean, in, I a, like, in a way, it is, but like, it, but it, like in it, what way? Like truly, Sto- I'm just cur- story wise. But like, what, like, what does it do? I think the performances and the story it, like really grabs you, whether it's a, in a positive way or a negative way. Like you're really like feeling some sort of way for it. I guess I want to like, yeah. I, but like, couldn't you say that? And this is just like, and I'm being devil's advocate here about like Last Jedi, like in, like just as another like a, like something that really divided the fans. That some people are like, this changes the game, but like. Like I don't. I guess I just feel like that I don't think anyone is vehemently and vitriolically having opinions on the <laughs> Fallen Order story. No, I meant last, like the movie, The Last Jedi. Oh, oh, sorry. Like in a way of like how it, because I feel like this was a very divisive um, game, and I feel like you either. Lo- uh, and I guess I do see some people in the middle. Yeah, on it. I, I get, but I think, like, because I just don't see narratively. Like, I don't think we've. I think God of War gives me better performances that I care more about, and that I feel more for the characters. It gives me a story that I'm about all the way through. I just don't think narratively wise this does it, this brings up any new themes that we've ever not encountered in a video game. I guess the biggest difference is how it's cut up, but even that I just feel like doesn't work for me. And I don't know. I guess it's just like I don't find it to be this next level storytelling experience that I feel like I see a lot of people like go after. Not to say it's a bad game. Not to say like that like it's there's no redeeming qualities to it or anything like that because that's not true. Obviously it's not true. A lot of people like it, but I don't know. I just don't see it being this like life-altering game that I see a lot of people talk about. Right. But, you know, to each their own, and I do not want to begrudge someone for maybe thinking that. Because right. that's just the way it is. Last award. Game of the year. 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 Um, of course, the winner is Last of Us Part Two by Naughty Dog going up against Animal Crossing New Horizons, Doom Eternal by id Software, Final Fantasy VII Remake by Square Enix, Ghost of Tsushima by Sucker Punch, and Hades by Supergiant Games. I think the only one that didn't have a horse in the race was Animal Crossing. I think it's only on there because of how, um, what's the word? It begins with a P. Of a phenomena this game was. And um, also, just I feel like there wasn't. There's like always trying... that one game on Game of the Year list no, that like, deserves that be to be there. No, oh, deserves yeah, yeah. to be there, but will not win it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. And that was it. And maybe Doom Eternal will come, come up second. I would think so, too. I don't yeah. think everyone loved Doom Eternal that much. Well, it's funny. I, yeah, I think everyone was like, oh, it's Doom. For the most part, like that was kind of the consensus. I think 2016 part. was probably up for game of the year that year, and that would be the doom for sure because it kind of got it back. There. Yeah, Final Fantasy VII, my game of the year. Yeah, uh, as a, you know, again, 100% should be up there. Ghost of Tsushima, I don't agree, but a lot of people thought that was their game, definitely of the year. my game of the year right. for sure. Yeah, Hades is, a, is another game that a lot of people were talking about was their game of the year. Um, and Last of Us Part Two, same thing, but. 
Like, I just would have liked to have seen know. some, like, just more variety and even, like, game, like, like, how does Half-Life Alex not win game direction? Like, imagine directing a VR game. Right. That, that's, that's, that's th- like I think tr- that's the conversation behind, like, how did that win? Yeah. Like, 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 every other game on that list has, like, it just is doing things a little bit differently than The Last of Us Part 2, but Last of Us Part 2 is the big game this yeah, year. Yeah, like, I really feel like, did Half-Life Alex even, like, what did that win? Like, anything? VR. Well, I'm, and yeah, like that's because it's a little it's, sad, right? Yeah, all right. And it's like I think every year we, I feel like last year we kind of had like a lot of different games winning a lot of different awards, um, which we, was because there was a, a pick of the litter. It was like, right, and I think next year we're probably going to run into the same thing. I don't think we're going to get a bunch of heavy hitters next year. Next year is going to be a dull year. We just had a console launch, and believe it or not, half of these games aren't on next gen. I feel like yeah. the only like Demon Souls wasn't up for anything. Yeah. Um, Miles Morales was up for one award, but like a lot of the next gen titles weren't even on this list. One, they're they're probably coming out late, so they're probably not too much in the co- not that they're not in the conversation. But, but it's yeah. But I, I, I think other the tail pe- end. right, other people are adding like some of the old, like games that came out earlier in the year. But next year, you know, we're going to be in a fully next gen year where every game that's coming out is going to be on next gen. Yeah. Um. So we'll see. You know, it, it's the thing is like, what heavy hitters are we going to have next year? If Halo Infinite is on there, it's probably going to win a lot. Or if Halo Infinite comes out next year, it's probably going to win a decent bit if it's good. Um, yep. Definitely. But, you know, we're we're kind of heading into a year where okay, like every game this year uh, has been worked on in pandemic and an insane amount. Mm-hmm. Um, there are probably a ton of games that were you know started early in 2019. And then, but, you know, we're still early on by the time people went to Potomac, so we didn't hear about it. So now, like, every game coming out for the next year or two is going to, is, it was a part of this pandemic. Yeah. So it's going to be, in, like, you know, it could have pushed some games that were going to come out in 2021 to 2022. No, definitely. So now, now we're in this time frame where pandemic, not that it hasn't affected everything, because it has, no, sure. but... Lo- Every I mean, game now had a substantial amount of development period in pandemic where they weren't being crunched. Yeah, well, they weren't being crunched and they also maybe didn't have the exact tools they needed right away. And there was that. I feel like video games are going to be less affected by this than, than say, like a movie and right. TV show thing. Right. Obviously, they're, not, they're, still they're going affected to be. in just kind of like the timeline. Exactly. Like and not, well, I mean, to, and to clarify, like they're just going to come out later, but they never had a date to begin with. Yeah, like like things just pushed. Back. And honestly, and it I'm won't sure, probably uh, even be that much later than probably. Like every company has has made some sort of plan that pandemic affected things. So it's like okay, like we're not gonna maybe we're not gonna hit this date exactly. Yeah. Um, next year's gonna be interesting. Uh, yeah, we'll, you know, we'll see what happens for movies for games. It, it you know, it's it, 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 it's it. I there's not much going on that we know of for nope. sure. Yeah. You know? Like, it's like just, even Halo Infinite, it's got it. It's got a time frame, but like it doesn't mean anything. Really, As we saw yeah. with Cyberpunk, exactly a game that if it came out in April, I sure the shit would have been like this is in the conversation. But Definitely, like, but and I thought it's... everyone thought Cyberpunk was going to be in the conversation all year until it got delayed. Now it got in delayed, November. and now it's so yeah, yeah. I really I think Cyberpunk. Well, glitches and all, I think it would have given this a run for its money for sure. Last of Us, in, in a lot of ways, if it did come out earlier. Yeah, and for was, a lot of these games and for categories, yeah. like it would have, it would have been included. But you know, yeah. Um, right. anything else, Gooch? Yeah. What? So, <laughs> what? What's your personal like game games of the year list? Games of the year. So really, I didn't. There wasn't much this year. Truthfully, like yeah. there really was. Like, so, Ghost it's, was. It's funny. This time last year, we were pimping up. Yeah, we were like, let's go. We're and getting it, and it just that and the other, and then fucking shit. But my, I mean, I really only had five. I feel like there was one that I missed that I can't remember. But it was Ghost Tsushima. I think was definitely my game of the year easily. I think they did such an amazing job bringing like a feudal Japan setting to life and making me truly give a shit about the characters and like. I cared about every single side quest in that for the most part. Obviously, there was, like, the more minor ones, but, like, all the side characters that you kind of built up and have these unique stories with was a ton of fun, and I cannot wait to jump back into that universe if they do, but I would also love to see Sucker Punch maybe explore a completely different aspect again, give us a new IP. I game. hope they do. But that's tough to do, so, like, I, I'm not really expecting that. I, d- I don't want to see a sequel to Ghost. I, I would totally take a sequel to Ghost, but, you know, <laughs> uh, next stop was Doom Eternal. This is a no, besides Ghost, which is at the top, this is in no particular order. Uh, Doom Eternal, a lot of fun. Obviously, I don't think there's 
there wasn't too much different there. I, I liked the story a lot in that one. I feel like it kind of gave me more of a reason to want to go through these levels and shoot up all these fucking demons and shit like that. Uh, it was a good time. Uh, Amnesia was a great time. Rebirth, I think that was definitely at the top for me with with just how they kind of expanded on that first story, got me back in. I think it could have been looking back a little bit scarier, but of overall, very fun game. Uh, see, this was one I was confused about. I saw on, I looked because I just Googled games that came out in 2020. Was Resident Evil 3 2020? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was definitely beyond the top. I enjoyed that. I don't think it was as good as the Resident Evil 2 remake, but uh, still had a lot of fun. And then I will mention, I've been enjoying it, but it's still not knocking me out of the park was AC Valhalla. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of at a standstill right now, especially considering I got Cyberpunk. and. It's funny. A lot of people like that game, but like it wasn't really on any... Yeah, like you know, I think it was up in one or two categories. And yeah, I truly just with those that series, I want. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing for me. Like with with how they treat some of the narrative stuff, I want a setting that's more. It's a city again. I want a dense city, urban setting, not necessarily not like current day, but like right. but like a like a Venice, like in a, like a Florence, like something like, like that. A Constantinople. Like, yeah, like it, give me a city. And even like London, I freaking loved. I loved. <laughs> I loved. Par- like while I don't think those games are necessarily the strongest narratively, setting wise, I in I love Paris and I love like for you for Unity and stuff like that. But it sucks we kind of use them now already, and we can't. Maybe maybe we could go back, but I feel like that's kind of retread. Uh, but yeah, that's yeah, my they, personal I list. I don't think they did bad. Yeah, too. I don't think they would either. My list: Final Fantasy VII remake. As as I've said, if you you know, we got a review for everything he just said. I think. Yeah, everything everything Trio just yep. said we have a review for, so check out those reviews if you want a more thought-out opinion. Um, probably the same goes for my list, which is a little shorter. Um, Final Fantasy VII Remake, obviously. You know, I, I kind of, just to kind of sum that up again, it's like Final Fantasy VII wasn't just remade, it was rethought, reimagined, and reinvented. They didn't have to do what they did to that game, but they did, and, and I think it really paid off in a way that... I didn't. I could not have seen coming. As a Final Fantasy VII fan, I'm hyped for the sequel. That's awesome. Um, because you know we're not fucking done yet. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> we only we only played through the first eight hours of the game, which ended up being an eighty hour game, <laughs> <laughs> or like sixty. I still got to replay it. Can't wait to play it on the PS5. I got to replay it on the hardest difficulty for the trophy and the plat. So wow. that'll, that'll be fun. I I put that aside purposely. I'm like I'm gonna go back whenever. Sure. Um. Next up. Amnesia Rebirth, um, kind of like echo what Trio said. I fucking loved Amnesia Rebirth. Another game that kind of caught me by surprise that I really didn't have expectations to in into jumping in, and then I played it and I was like, "Fuck, this is like as good as the original, if not better." And it kind of services the world. I didn't expect it did a lot of things I didn't expect, and I really appreciated it, appreciated it as a fan of Frictional and a fan of the original Amnesia. Um, and my last one. Miles Morales. Um, oh fuck! Duh. How can I forget? Yeah. Continue. Sorry. It could be on your list. Yeah. Too. Um, <laughs> Miles Morales was a- another game that I'm not sure what I had an opinion for. You know, it was not a sequel to Spider-Man, but a, like a one and a half, and it was forty dollars. So what does that mean? But that game ended up being like a jump in, jump out, like fun fucking game. Um, Good time killer. If you like, Sp- yeah. If you like Spider-Man. You're gonna like this. It's a much different story. It's it's you know it's not Peter Parker Spider Man, but it's Miles Morales and and hit and his name and not literally is written everywhere, but like you know it feels like Miles Morales's game, not a Peter Parker Spider Man game. Um, and I'm not I'm not I'm not sure if I want to see more of it, but I'm excited to you know get Spider Man two eventually and see what happens in that world with yep. those characters because. I don't think they're going to be sticking around too long. You know what I mean? See, I think I think you're. You I, think one of, on, one I think one of them has P- to oh, die. Well, one of them is, but I think it's going to be Peter. Whenever that does happen, I don't maybe. Think, I just don't see. I'd be very surprised if they killed off the new Spider-Man earlier. Than, than like, see, you know, like, I think it would mean more to Peter Parker if Miles died, uh, and I couldn't. I couldn't imagine them continuing a Spider-Man series with Miles Morales without Peter Parker. You know? Yeah, I mean, he does in the... I, yeah, I don't know. He does in the comics, but it starts like that. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Because yeah, uh, I wouldn't be... Thing. I would think they would kill off Peter, personally. But I cannot wait for Spider-Man 2. Uh, and that's it, guys. Another year. Another game of the year. Another game. And I was going to say another year in gaming. But mm. yeah. Um, 
I'm trying to think like what we I don't even know what we have. Well, Cyberpunk will definitely be in January. We're going to do we're, we're going to review Mandalorian once that's done, which is next Friday as we're, as of we're recording. Wonder this. Woman. Yeah, once will that's be coming. Out. Um a Series X review will be coming and I think that's really all I have planned in the, in the pipeline. Uh we got a few other things, a few surprises, yeah. you know. A few irons in the in the what is it? Irons in the fire. Uh, yeah, yeah, there are there are some stuff in the in the works, but I feel like t- once we hit 2021, things will kind of slow down. We've had December is always a big content month for us, but I feel like games and movies wise, like I think we're gonna, it'll be we'll hit a point where it's like okay, like we're gonna have to scrounge a little bit for some content for you guys, but we'll figure it out. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're, yeah, we'll we're not scrounge. You know it, what I mean? It's cool for a slow month. Maybe that get give us time to develop some of the like a new series we might be doing like. Who knows? Maybe Definitely. some cooler beyond county lines. Who knows? That's it. Sizzle, sizzle, motherfucker. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching live on twitch.tv slash Delco Nerd Network. We very much appreciate it. If you're new around here, check us out on social media. We're at Delco Nerds on everything. Uh, we have a Facebook page. Just search Delco Nerd Network. Uh, our email is Delco Nerds at gmail.com. You can contact us there. Maybe send us some uh, topic ideas. Oh no, whatever. It's it's open to whoever wants to send an email our way. You can find all of this information on our website, DelcoNerdNetwork.com. For Gooch, I've been Trio. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay nerdy, and we will see you next time. Mm-hmm.